Hi guys, I'm Dave, and this is Beer Virtually. Today we have something we haven't done on the channel yet. We have Larry's latest sour from Bell's. Um, this is probably the type of beer that I am least familiar with. Another cool um, Bell's bottle cap. I think the seasonals and stuff they do more different things with. This is cool. It's a yellow cap with an orange hop on there. It smells kind of like an IPA, like a light IPA. Maybe citra hops or something like that. A little bit ahead. Very light pour. Go. It's like a little bit of sediment floating around in there. I don't really see anything in the, in the bottle though. So like I said, I'm probably least familiar with sours. I've had maybe a dozen total in my whole beer drinking career. That being said, it is a little bit sour. It's not like pucker your lips sour, but it's like tart citrus sour. Almost like how a grapefruit would be sour. But it's more orangey tasting than grapefruit tasting. But there is a definite citrus note that's very strong through this beer. I believe this is 5%, 5% ABV, um, no IBUs listed, which is kind of weird. I wonder, I wonder why they don't list IBUs sometimes. We, we, we looked into the IBUs a little bit, and IBUs exist due to isomeritized alpha acids, and, uh, but sour beers, are soured using a certain strain of yeast. It's called like a Laxi bilisi or something like that. <clears throat> I'll put it up here. We've talked about it once or twice before. Uh, when Ken was on, he talked about it. And from what I hear, you have to be very careful that that yeast doesn't contaminate your whole, it can make everything sour with a very small amount. Some breweries will even brew sours off-site so that they don't contaminate the other beers. This is quite refreshing though. I would say this is, although this is only put out in, I believe, February and March. Yes, it's a limited release. It's put out in February and March. I would think this would be more of a warm weather beer. I'm not quite sure why they chose to put it out in February and March, but it's what they've done. So one of the first times I had a sour beer was at Austin Beer Works. And Mike, the owner, um, had me try one. And I had a couple sips and he's like, you gotta, you gotta give it the whole beer. And I was like, okay. And that kind of changed my perspective a little bit on trying beers that you might not like. And I've noticed that quite a bit as I drink beers here on the channel, that as you get through a beer, it definitely changes. As it warms up, as it kind of goes through like a, like a cycle, like, a, like, a, like an arc. So, but um, pretty cool bottle, a little bit different for Bells. Uh, it looks like someone's, you know, like massaging their jaw like it's really sour. And it's the same yellow background with orange hop 
like it is on the bottle cap. It says kettle soured ale with a dry hop burst. On the back it says, the name Larry's Latest is a nod to the spirit of innovation and, and experimentation that Larry started in 1985 and continues within the brewery to this day. Our latest sour recipe has a refreshingly bright citrusy tartness combined with a pungent tropical combined with pungent tropical aromas. I would say that's very accurate. Uh, on their website there's actually a um, a sour vinaigrette salad dressing recipe which looked pretty interesting. It was uh, it was um, like uh, a shallot diced up um, some uh, I think like a half a cup of sour a half a cup of olive oil and it looked like it'd be pretty good. I used to make beer brats quite a bit or take like a like a cheaper beer like you know like Budweiser or something like that put the beer brats in a put the brats in a in a uh, Ziploc bag with the beer and some um, a bunch of garlic powder some salt and let them sit for like a day and cook them. There was a big debate whether you should poke the skin of the brats or not. Some true grillers say you should not because then you let the juices out of the brat. Other people say that if you poke the, the skin of the brat, it lets the beer into the brat. I've done it both ways. I haven't noticed a huge difference. Um, like I mentioned before, I don't eat meat anymore, so that was a long time ago, but still. I still enjoy cooking. I still cook meat for people and you know, invite people over I'm at someone's house. I don't mind cooking meat. This is definitely sour. This is, um, if you had to give it an IBU rating, it would be 100 plus for sure on, on how sour it is. And, and I'm really curious as to why. I should look up some other sours and see if they're, they have a rating for, um, they have a rating for how they judge, you know, if there's an IBU rating for the other sours. Speaking of rating, to try to give this beer, good, pretty good lathing on the glass, look at that. To try to give this beer a rating, this is very much out of my wheelhouse when it comes to the type of beers I like and drink in, in general. So, to try to give it a rating, um, I'm gonna go 3.75, and here's why. I, I think 3.5, if a beer, if a beer is good quality and offers something slightly different than the norm, I mean, or just has a slight uniqueness, I should say, um, then I would think 3.5 is like kind of an average. So 3.75, I, I mean, for me to give a beer a three or a three and a quarter, it's gotta be, subpar so this is a little above average I would say um, the mix of flavors the smells um, like I said definite citrus aromas I would guess there might there may be some citra hops in here maybe some Simcoe I should said oh, I didn't see it on their site anyway I'm gonna give it a 3.75 I think it was pretty good, and uh, it makes me want to try some more sours. So, um, I actually have one in the fridge that Ken sent down. Uh, he said it was the worst beer he's ever tried. I think it's a barrel-aged sour, which is really interesting and unique. This beer is a, it, it's not as light as it comes across, though. I think a couple of these, you would have your fill. It would kind of, it would almost start to sit heavy a little. Anyway, that was good. Until next time, cheers.